So hi all, myself Fatima Siyad, MLK trainer from VMAX. So today we are going to discuss about the gram positive bacilli. So let's start the video. So gram positive organisms can be classified into aerobes and facultative anaerobes. So aerobe means those organisms can live in presence of oxygen. So the bacillus, bacillus are aerobe and facultative anaerobe. So aerobe and facultative means in presence of oxygen or in absence of oxygen they can survive and this organism is a spore forming bacteria. Then the second one is Clostridium. Clostridium is obligate anaerobe. So the term obligate means strict. So that means it does not require oxygen for their growth. So that means they are strictly anaerobic organism and they are also having spore. So Bacillus and Clostridium are the gram positive organisms. So first we have to discuss about the Bacillus anthrax. So Bacillus anthracis. So it is a large gram positive bacilli usually arranged in chains. So anthrax bacilli is a spore forming organism and it is non motile So spore forming means spore are considered as the highly resistant resting stage of the organism. Resting stage means they can be survive in the soil for many years without any destruction. So if you are using disinfectant also we cannot destroy the spore completely. So spores are considered as the highly resistant resting form of the organism. So the spore having oval shape, central and non projecting and the organism having one capsule also. So the capsule is made up of polypeptide glutamic acid and that organism cell wall is rich in polysaccharide also. So Bacillus anthrax is a gram positive spore forming bacilli and it is facultative anaerobe. That means in presence of oxygen or absence of oxygen also they can survive. So anthrax bacilli is mainly in giving infection to human beings by different routes are there. So that means mainly from the animals we are getting infection. So we can say anthrax is a zoonotic disease. So the term zoonotic means from animals to human beings. So the zoonotic organism can be entered into the body either through cutaneous route or through the pulmonary route or through the ingestion of contaminated food or water. So the most important routes are cutaneous and aerosol inhalation route. So the cutaneous route means if an organism having the spore present in the soil will remain viable for many years. So any animals especially cattle or sheep if they are having come in contact with the spore in their skin. So from the skin of this animal. So when we are taking the wool from the sheep. So the wool containing spore will be enter into the human body either through the aerosol inhalation. So once it entering into the human body it will affect the lungs. So we can say it can cause a severe pulmonary infection. So that is considered as the highly contagious form of the anthrax bacillus. So it is also called the wool sorter disease. That means those people working in the woolen factory, they having close contact with the woolen containing the spore. So if there is an accidental inhalation of the spore occurring, they will develop serious pulmonary infection. So that is the main root of the anthrax. It is also called the wool sorter's disease. So the fatal rate is 50 percent for this condition. The next case is cutaneous disease. Cutaneous means the mode of entry is through the skin. So if there is an open wound uh, or a, any abrasions in our skin, so if you are walking barefoot, if that organism spore will be entered through the cut of the skin, the organism can cause uh, serious cutaneous disease condition. So we can develop malignant pustules. So it is usually affecting in the neck portion and the cutaneous region of hands, legs, etc. So that is called a cutaneous mode of transmission. So here also the fatality rate is 10 percentage. Then the third route is gastrointestinal route. It is rarely occurring condition if you are cooking. That means if you are under cooking the meat. So especially cattle meat if you are not properly cooking and you are taking the meat containing the spore. So with the normal cooking the spore cannot be destroyed. So the spore can resist the temperature above 150 degree. So it fit entering into the body, they will get, uh, develop gastrointestinal problem. So that is the three roots of anthrax. So cutaneous root, pulmonary root and the third one is the gastrointestinal root. Then 
Next, uh, we have to discuss about how we can identify this organism. So for the anthrax, so many features are there for the identification. So when we are doing gram staining, this organism will appear as gram positive and it is a filamentous organism. So we can see it look like bamboo stick arrangement. That means at the end of the one organism, other one is attaching. So it's look like a bamboo stick appearance on the gram stain. Then one important feature in the culture media. So when we are doing blood agar means we can see hemolytic colony over there. And on the nutrient agar we having a characteristic medusa head appearance or we can see this a mat of locked colony. Then an important reaction of bacillus anthrax is the McFadden reaction. So that means this organism is a capsulated bacilli. So capsule means we are considered as a protective form of the organism that means when any organisms containing capsule will enter into our body our body cells that is a phagocytic cell present in our body cannot engulf the organism so that means that the organism having capsule means they are getting protection from the phagocytic mechanism inside our body so mcfadden reaction mainly used for detecting the capsule so here we are using a methylene blue stain that is called the gar polychromethylene blue stain so when we are doing staining this organism will appear as purple color around the blue colony that means the capsule will appear as blue and the organism will appear as purple so that is called the mcfadden reaction then we have direct fluorescent assay is also there that is an antigen antibody reaction we are detecting for the organism and this organism can be observed with the Indian ink stain. Indian ink is considered as a negative stain that is used for detecting the capsule. So with the negative stain means we are giving the color to the background, not to the organism. So we can see the organism with capsule appear as clear halo with the background having black color. So that is mainly used for the identification of anthrax bacilli. Then we have to consider this anthrax bacilli having a selective medium that is called a plet agar medium. So the ingredients are polymyxin, lysozyme, EDTA and thallus acetate. So this is considered as a selective media for the anthrax bacilli. So in this media the organism will appear as string of pearl appearance that is very important for the identification of this organism that is called a string of pearl colony. The next organism we are going to discuss is Cornebacterium. So Cornebacterium diphtheria is also a gram positive organism that can grow in presence of oxygen but it is does not having any spore. So Cornebacterium diphtheria is also called the club shaped bacteria because this organism having arranged in a letter pattern that is V or L like arrangement or we can say Chinese letter pattern or cuneiform arrangement. This organism is aerobe and facultative anaerobe. So aerobe means in presence of oxygen or in absence of oxygen also they can survive. It does not having spore. So previously we discussed about the anthrax basil it is a spore forming but it is without spore. And it is a non acid fast organism then non motile and important feature that is important biochemical reaction for the identification of cornebacterium is it is a catalase positive organism. So this organism is having a characteristic granules are there that is called the polychromatic granules or another name is voluting granule, bay burners granule or metachromatic granules. For the detection of this granule present in this cornebacterium diphtheria we are usually using is Albert stain. Then other than Albert stain we can use ponder or nasal stain also. So for the cornebacterium diphtheria the cell having a characteristic Chinese letter pattern arrangement and this organism are usually invading in the nasopharynx. So the nasopharyngeal region are usually affected by the cornebacterium diphtheria species and the disease is transmitted through aerosol inhalation or direct contact with the infected person. So this organism will produce a toxin that is called the diphtheria endotoxin. It is a it will block the protein synthesis taking place in our body. So this organism is mainly invading in our throat region. So when we are getting infection with the cornebacterium diphtheria, this organism will release some toxins over there. So with the help of this toxins, that tissue will getting damaged. So we can say this is a tissue necrotic condition. Then later it form a pseudo membrane appearance to that area. So the patient is having difficulty in swallowing and breathing. If untreated cases means that may leading to death also. So for the diphtheria, we have combined vaccines are available along with the pertussis and tetanus toxoid that is called the DPT vaccine. So the diphtheria, pertussis and tetanus toxoid vaccine became available. So let's discuss about the laboratory identification feature for detecting the cornebacterium diphtheria. So the cornebacterium diphtheria can grow well on special media that is called the Loeffler serum slop. So it is a serum containing media, it should be sterilized at a temperature of 80 degree in an inspissator. 
then other medias are potassium telluride agar and tinsdale media so in the potassium telluride agar media corneal bacteria diphtheria capable of producing black color colony that is also very important for the identification then for identifying the toxin production in the organism we can use a reaction that is called the lx gel precipitation test so that means we are checking the antigen antibody reaction in a gel medium so that these are the important points associated with the corneal bacteria diphtheria now we can discuss about the clostridium species so before we discuss about the bacillus anthrax it is an aerobic organism then corneal bacteria diphtheria both are aerobic and bacillus anthrax is a spore forming organism so now we are going to discuss about the clostridium species they are strictly anaerobic that means they cannot survive in presence of oxygen so the important members in the clostridium family are clostridium tetany clostridium perfringens clostridium difficile and clostridium botulinum so they are anaerobic anaerobic means they can grow in absence of oxygen and it is a spore forming gram positive organism so clostridium species are usually anaerobic and they having spore they are gram positive in nature so the clostridium spores are also present in soil water sewages and other part of the normal flora areas in our gastrointestinal system also so among the clostridium family the important species is clostridium tetany they are capable of causing the tetanus disease condition it is also called a lock jaw disease so this organism is gram positive bacilli spore forming motile so the spore having terminal spore so the the term used for the clostridium tetany that is a spore is called a terminal spore it is also having a characteristic drum stick appearance so this organism is strictly anaerobic so strictly means we can say the term obligate so obligate means they cannot survive even if in a presence of minute concentration of oxygen also so this organism cannot grow well on the normal artificial media it require a special media that doesn't having any oxygen content so the best media for the isolation of clostridium tetany is rcm media that is a robertson cooked meat media it is an example of anaerobic culture media then clostridium tetany is mainly causing the disease called tetanus so it is due to the presence of two n uh, two toxins producing in that organism that is called tetanolysin and tetanospasmin so tetanolysin are capable of lyse the rbcs or erythrocytes and tetanospasmin is an exotoxin and it is having a neurotoxic effect so this is the main reason for developing the tetanus condition so the tetanospasmin is responsible for the neurotoxic condition so once they are releasing the neurotoxin means the person may develop difficulty in the central nervous system so that means our muscles will become rigid and having a spasm so the patient having inability to move the lock jaw so that is why it is called the lock jaw disease then it will be uh, continuing to the upper and lower extremities that is hand and feet also so overall muscle spasm is mainly causing by the clostridium tetany so if we having any injury with any metal items we are taking the tetanus toxoid vaccine that is in order to prevent that entry of this clostridium tetany organism then for clostridium tetany also we have vaccinations are available that is called the tetanus toxoid vaccine so here that uh, tetanus toxoid antigen we are injecting into horse or any other laboratory animals and once the animal is developing anti tetanus antibody we are isolating the antibody and that ready made antibodies we are giving to the immuno deficient patients so that means immediately they are providing immunity to the patient so that is the vaccination we are giving for the tetanus toxoid infections are called the tt vaccine that is a tetanus toxoid vaccination so we can give in a monovalent dose or in a trivalent dose so, so trivalent means it is a combination with the diphtheria vaccine and bordetella pertussis vaccine so the next species coming under the clostridium clostridium family is called the clostridium perfringens they are also gram positive usually arranged in chains they are also having spores are there and this organism is highly infectious in nature so the clostridium perfringens are capable of producing the disease condition called gas gangrene so it is used in the uh, weapon also that is it is considered as a bio weapon so we can say it is commonly affecting the military peoples 
So the Clostridium perfringens can causing the disease called the gas gangrene due to the production of some toxins. Then it can also capable of producing food poisoning condition also. So the major toxin released by the Clostridium perfringens are alpha toxins. So the toxin and the toxin activity can be detected by using a characteristic text called the Nagler reaction or lecithinase effect. So the Clostridium perfringens spore can also remain in our soil for more than hundreds of years. So that is mainly if you are coating the spore with a bullet that make injury to the military person and if that injury occurring means that area will developing some black color with the release of some gas. That means the organism will ferment sugar in the tissue and once the organism is fermenting the sugar they will release the gas. So that making the color of the gas become black. So the patient having a severe pain around the affected area of the wound and the patient developing fever and it will spread fast and the resulting in the death of the patient. Then Clostridium perfringens can also having an important identification that is called the target hemolysis or double zone of hemolysis. That means due to the release of number of toxins, they can form double zone of hemolysis on the blood agar colony. So we can identify that colony as target or we can say double layer of hemolysis will be there. So that is also very important for the identification of Clostridium perfringens. The next organism is Clostridium difficile. So this is also usually present in our gastrointestinal tract. So when we having some antibiotic treatment are there, if a patient undergoing antibiotic therapy for several weeks, there is a chance of getting destruction of the normal flora organism in our intestinal region. So due to the deficiency of normal flora organism, this Clostridium difficile can develop very well and causing a serious condition called the antibiotic associated diarrhea or we can say pseudomembrane colitis. So that is an important feature for the identification of Clostridium uh, difficult species. It is also a mortal bacilli coming under the Clostridium family. So the main mode of transmission is fecal oral route. So the disease is called a pseudomembrane colitis and antibiotic associated diarrhea. So the next organism we have to discuss in the Clostridium family is Clostridium botulinum. It is also a gram positive spore bearing organism and this is having terminal spore. So the botulinum is mainly causing infection in canned food or tin food. That means pre-existing toxins are releasing into the food items. They can capable of causing the food poison condition. It is also a spore forming bacilli. The spore can remain viable in the soil for up to uh, 150 years so we cannot destroy the spore with the heating up to 100 degree because they are tolerating to high heat temperature. So the main disease caused by the Clostridium botulinum is called botulism or food poisoning. So the toxins will be releasing by the organism into the food. So that means if you are taking the contaminated food there is a chance of developing the disease condition. So these conditions are more commonly affecting infants that means those who are taking the honey and if they are putting sand in their mouth they are, if that sand or honey is contaminated with the spore of this botulinum they are developing the conditions. So for small children if they are taking the honey contaminated with the spore of Clostridium botulinum the first symptom they are developing is difficulty in breathing, difficulty in swallowing, difficulty in drinking. So overall uh, patient having difficulty in doing swallowing or drinking that is because of the spasm developing the throat, uh, throat region.